Okay, so I have downloaded the XAMPP and DevPHP installers here. I'm just going to begin by double clicking on the XAMPP installer. And we're going to just install, just install it onto CZAMP. It might put a subdirectory um, called XAMPP already, but that's all right. Like I said before, I really do want this course to be a looking over my eyes as I do this, so that's why I'm just letting the video record the installation for XAMPP. I want you to actually just literally see what I'm seeing during this whole process. So we're gonna, this should be finishing up soon and then we'll go on to DevPHP.
All right, now Zamp is going through and asking you for setup. So should I add shortcuts to the start menu or desktop? Um, you can. I mean, I'll, I'll just say yes here. Okay. Current directory does not match pre-configured directory. Should I proceed? Yes, okay, the pre-configured directory is C colon backslash. Um, so if you left it as C colon backslash, you're probably not going to get this message, but I changed it. So yeah, proceed. It's going to change the paths. Um, should I make a portable ZAMP without drive letters? Um, yeah, we don't need a portable ZAMP. We're not going to be putting this on a USB stick. So it's going to relocate um, only because I changed the default path. So. These are all the products you get to. So you got the ZAMP base package, Apache. FileZilla is an FTP server. A lot of people know FileZilla as the client. Um, the FileZilla FTP server is there, so you can upload you know, to your uh, install. Um, Mercury, MySQL, OpenSSL for secure connections, Perl, PHP, PHP MyAdmin, Semil for mail sending, Webalizer for traffic analysis, and the ZAMP demo page. Uh, so ZAMP's ready for use. All right, what is, I've set the time zone of PHP in Miami to America, New York. Well, I guess that works for me. I'm in the East Coast here in the United States. Make sure that um, whatever is set, um, if the time zone is wrong for where you're at, although it's not really important, um, you basically do want, I mean, it is important when we're doing the time and date section of PHP, but for most part, what we'll be doing is not really important. Um, production environments, obviously, care about log file timestamps and that kind of thing but anyway this course is not designed for a production environment you're not the ZAMP and dev PHP are not to be installed in the production environment this is purely for education the material in the course though can be used to develop production applications um, keep that in mind though uh, okay so basically PHP my PHP dot any is the configuration file for PHP my.ini is a configuration file for my SQL. Um, if the time zone is wrong, just make sure you go into those files and there's a section into XAMPP um, that you can go in directly and edit them. Or dev PHP lets you edit them one way or the other. Alright, so this is the setup slash control menu for um, uh, for XAMPP. I basically, yeah, so it did do C colon backslash XAMPP backslash XAMPP. So you can just leave C colon backslash and and it'll be fine. Um, so we're going to start the XAMPP control panel, which pops up. I'm going to slide it over here. Starts a nice little GUI control panel. Um, I'm not sure which services I want to enable quite yet because Dev PHP does bring in an Apache version, and I'm not entirely sure which of these services I want to start. So I'm not going to start them quite yet. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what these things do. Okay, that just brings up the same page. Um, what's port check do? Cur ports. Okay. Anyway. Uh, oh, okay. So it's showing you what they're actually running on, what these ports are free, what ports are free. So anyway. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to minimize this. It sh should minimize. I'd hope. It doing? There it goes. All right, minimize the shell, and yeah, also puts an icon up here to the control panel, so you can always access it. All right, so now I will exit, and now I'll double click on Dev PHP, and Dev PHP is a very easy install. Um, so let's see what options are. I don't need it in the quick launch bar, so the standard options here should be sufficient. Um, and we'll install it. And um, I'll run dev PHP just to give you an idea of what it looks like here. Did you know you shouldn't disable these tips? Okay, it's a funny developer here. Um, okay, so well, we won't for the most part. Uh, let's rechange it later. So here's, I will, since the video window is 
do something like this. Um, but it's just, it lets you develop right here. And, you know, this is a regular PHP page. There's external preview. Cannot execute an empty file, that's true. All right, so I'm just going to test what we'll do here. Um, I'm going to cover this kind of stuff, um, and obviously, in later le lessons, but I just want to see if we're. Cannot execute an empty file. Why would it say that? Maybe. What if I. Ooh. Let's see here. I'm trying to figure out. How do I create a new folder? project data and I'll see if I can save it um, hold on a second okay so I figured it out um, one of the things I did do was I initially um, I hit start on Apache over here in the XAM control panel and it prompted me to install the service um, I just want to make mention because in case we do have to start Apache later uh, you'll get that you'll get that pop-up box and uh, I already already got it so I won't be able to show it to you on the video but the service is installed and I actually stopped Apache here it's not actually needed um, on this side of the house here so what I what I did have to do though was I went up to tools uh, I'm sorry options and I hit general options and under general options there's uh, it says PHP CGI and PHP any um, I hit the the box here and I, it, it took me, I t went into the XAMPP directory that I was in and found PHP CGI for, um, for the PHP CGI box here and PHP any for the PHP any. And what this does is I, it's telling me that I want to use the PHP that's installed with um, the XAMPP PHP. So I'm pointing specifically to that. The doc root is the C drive for the XAMPP install by default. Okay, so when you specify the PHP any and the PHP uh, CGI you'll get a tab that says internal preview okay so when that that comes up you can click on it and you know it, it, it I put echo PHP info uh, with parentheses over here and then PHP info is a function um, of PHP which PHP will basically give you all sorts of information about its installation so I did that and what you see and I then click internal preview and it actually ran you know and shows me it's PHP version 531 and there's just all sorts of information um, here's the PHP any path and that kind of thing so anyway so I can I can do all sorts of you know things at this point I can um, uh, let's see that's uh, not see warning date expects at least one parameter we haven't gotten to the date stuff but I'm just I'm just messing around um, there's the epoch time for Unix um, so you'll get I wanted to test to make sure warnings were turned on there's also if you wanted to edit the PHP any there's a I don't know if there's an edit for my any but anyway my dot any but you can edit the PHP any here there might be a few settings that we need to change in fact I wanna see about register globals Oops. Control Z here to back out. Register globals. Oh, what's it doing? Oh, I gotta find out what the find next option is here. Um, search. Search next F3. Okay. Register globals is off. Um, that's good. I want it off for our testing. It's best not to use it. Uh, and I also am curious to know what the warnings, the error the error uh, options are but it, since it showed me the error in the internal preview I'm okay with it we can close how do you close by the way I, I don't use these things to develop but I am using them to dev to uh, to make the course so no, we're not going to save the changes so I basically am you know just like you learning how they, how they work and I figure it kind of keeps it um, realistic uh, because I'm I'm learning with you so okay so that's good. There's nothing that needs to be turned on with XAMPP quite yet. We might have to turn on the MySQL and PHP MyAdmin portions of it, um, but we'll find that out when we get to the MySQL section. 
uh, with that, uh, we can proceed over to Unit 2 for the introduction uh, to the PHP content. And uh, yeah, and I'll see you over there in that section.